When a person thinks, I am a Christian, this other person is a Muslim, and therefore he is my enemy, or I am a Muslim, this other person a Hindu, therefore she is my enemy, this reveals a lack of their own spiritual depth and understanding. No religion teaches this. Any understanding of any religion that adopts this divisive attitude proves itself false by doing so. As a Vaishnava Hindu, a devotee of Sri Krishna, I recognize and respect both Jesus Christ and the Prophet Muhammad as messengers of God, messengers of love, messengers of peace and universal brotherhood. The Quran states, humanity is but a single brotherhood, so make peace with your brethren. The Sri Shupanishad, a Hindu scripture, states, that person who sees everything in relation to the Supreme Lord who sees all living entities as parts and parcels of the Lord, and who sees the Supreme Lord within everything, never hates anyone or any being. The Bible states, anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. By cultivating the understanding that each individual has this intrinsic right to follow a particular spiritual or religious path or no path at all, by recognizing that this right is given to us by God, not by man or government, we can maintain a pluralistic, peaceful society. And without this understanding, without this commitment to respect and uphold this right, there can be no foundation for peace in the world. We see groups like ISIS, Al-Qaeda, and Boko Haram all share this divisive ideology in common. In fact, it's at the heart of this Wahhabi Salafist ideology sponsored and propagated by countries like Saudi Arabia. This exclusivist ideology is the opposite of real religion because it denies the inherent freedom of every individual to choose whether and how they want to love God or not. This is the enemy of peace for all of humanity. But we've got to remember also that nowhere, not even here in the United States, are we immune to the poison of religious bigotry. Abraham Lincoln was attacked with accusations that he was not a Christian. When John F. Kennedy ran for president, his political opponents tried to foment religious bigotry against his Catholicism. When Barack Obama ran for president in 2007, people accused him of being a Muslim as though somehow that would disqualify him from being president. When I first ran for Congress, my Republican opponent stated in a CNN interview that I shouldn't be allowed to serve in Congress because my Hindu religion, quote, doesn't align with the constitutional foundation of the U.S. government. Just last year, my Republican opponent stated that, quote, a vote for Tulsi is a vote for the devil because of my Hindu faith. The message in each of these situations was simple. You will be punished politically for being of the wrong religion. There's nothing more un-American than this. So we must stand with people of all religions who are committed to pluralism and individual free choice. People like Mahmoud al-Asali, who was assassinated for courageously speaking out against ISIS, brutal treatment of Christians in Mosul. Kuram Zaki, a prominent Pakistani journalist and human rights activist who was assassinated because he was one of many Muslims courageously advocating for a pluralistic, tolerant, secular Pakistan. Kenyan Muslims who shielded Christians from attack by terrorists. Jewish and Christian leaders in Victoria, Texas, who opened their synagogues and churches to 
the Muslim community whose mosque had burned down. There are countless examples of love and courage by individuals and communities who embrace and live by these true spiritual principles of peace, love, mercy, and tolerance. Let us be brave and forceful in standing up for each other's rights to live and worship freely. And let us not be afraid to say that whoever threatens that right for any one of us will have to face all of us together. Let us be inspired by the vision put forward by our nation's founders and challenge those who are fomenting religious bigotry to do the same. Rather than pour fuel on the fire of darkness, divisiveness, and hatred, let us bring the light found in the Aloha spirit to our lives, our country, and the world. Let us be inspired as we join hands, working toward the day when everyone, whether they be Hindu, Buddhist, Christian, Jew, Muslim, or atheist, or others, can live in peace and freedom from fear. Let us confront hatred with love. Confront bigotry with aloha. Confront fear with courage. Let us truly live aloha in our actions, in our words, and in our hearts. Thank you all for being here. Thank you very much. Aloha. Miharika. Miharika. Nice to Honestly, you're the reason I got into politics. I just I can't tell you how much of how big of an inspiration you are. In your own speech, you said you were a Hindu faith, right? Yeah. So if when people question your ability to be in Congress, how do you go about that? Like if if we were to run for Congress, say, and being Muslim woman especially, how do you go about that? How do you respond to people and how do you like prove your ability? by a little bit of what I talked about by responding with um, the truth? Mm -hmm. If they don't want you to succeed because of your position on tax reform or on foreign policy or on you know, infrastructure, fine, have that debate and that argument, but to, to use religion um, as a political weapon uh, should not be accepted by anyone.